that everyone has come out to the West Side Community uh, health care, Affordable Health Care Act Forum. I am Shauna Howard. I am the Executive Director of the John Spears Healthy Living Foundation. I am thankful that God has blessed us with the ability to gather here today to learn more about our benefits. It is important to recognize the efforts behind this event. Diane Whitaker, the president of the West Side Neighborhood Watch, Marsha Frazier, Vice President, Mr. and Ms. Mays, the advisors, Peggy Battles, the event planner, Delta Sigma Theta for the refreshments, Coleman Elementary School for allowing us to assemble here. Lastly, our future state representative, Evan Elliott. Please visit the back table before you leave for information and handouts. I open the floor now to Ms. Diane Whitaker, our moderator. Prayer for us. Prayer. Okay. Prayer. Uh, okay. Uh, Stephen May, can you bless us with a prayer, please? Yes, ma'am. It's good to be here. And thank you again for your patience as well. Um, once again, I'm Alderman Stephen Mays, uh, your city councilman in the area. Uh, let's pray. Our Father and our God, once again, we just pause to say thank you. You are true, you are the true and the living God. And we bring witness together that you are the only God. Thank you for this meeting of the minds. Thank you for this Affordable Health Care Act forum. Thank you for Mr. Ephraim Elliott's vision. Thank you for all the members of the West Side Loop Neighborhood Watch Association for their, their, their togetherness and concern for our community. Bless everyone that attended tonight, touch them, keep them, protect their homes while we're here, Father God. Continue to bless this day and this very moment. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and agree. Amen. Thank you all for coming out. I am Aura Bay, uh, Mrs. Diane Whitaker. Could not be here. And I will do the introduction of the speaker, of the moderator. Uh, I think most of us pretty much are familiar with uh, Mr. Efren Elliott. I know our community. We know him very well uh, from last year. We had some issues going on. And he supported our community very well. He's very good at supporting any community, supporting Pine Bluff. He's not a resident from here. But it doesn't really matter to him. He's just always concerned with the community. We thank him. He came to us, and he was talking about this. So the West Side Loop community, we believe in trying to put out information to the community, to Pine Bluff. We invite anyone. Anytime you want to come to our meeting, we have our meeting every third Thursday of the month. We have anyone that we think can give our community or anyone information, we invite you to come out. We'd like to thank Mr. Elliott for, and the Delta for really supporting us. So now as the next speaker, our uh, moderator, will be Mr. Elliott. I'm going to make it short because I know we came here to, to be educated about insurance. Uh, but before I start, before I start, um, I want to most definitely thank Delta Sigma Theta for co-sponsoring this with us. Can we give them a round of hand? I want to thank my panel, which I'm going to ask each one of them to come up and introduce themselves because of the mic situation. We want to make sure everybody hears it. Uh, before I go on, I want to also recognize our elected officials. 
Uh, do we have any elected officials in the house? Stand, please. <laughs> Alderman Stephen Mays and Patricia Royal Johnson, our county clerk. I, I think it's very important to recognize them because they also took the time to come out and they understand how important this is to the community as well. So I want to thank them as well. Uh, now I'm going to start it. And we're going to have a wonderful time. We're going to learn all we can and get as many people signed up on affordable health care as possible. Uh, I'm going to ask the first young lady to come and speak a little bit about what she do. It won't be anything uh, longer than maybe a, a, a couple seconds. Good evening. My name is Crystal Battles. I am an IPA guy. My uh, company is Options for Life Services. We're based out of Texarkana, Texas, but I service Jefferson County and Bradley County areas. You can find me anytime, any day of the week. I'm down at 5519 West 13th, and I'm also at JRMC in the emergency room. Thank you. Ms. Roxy Battles. Good evening, my name is Roxy Ballington, and I bring you greetings from the Department of Human Services. We are still, um, people can still apply for Medicaid. We have several categories that are going away, like family planning, breast care, and some of the other categories, but we still have Medicaid, we still have the Medicare Savings Program, we still have um, pregnant women categories. We also have our kids. The good thing about our kids, um, there's been an income change in the our kids, and a lot of people who were getting our kids be where they had to pay a copay. Now they don't have to pay that copay because the income is higher. And I have a lot of pamphlets and material back in the back that you can use and that you can look at, and I also have a pay scale back there. Thank you. Next is uh, Reverend Orr. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tony Orr. I am the uh, State Field Director for United Labor Unions Local 100. Uh, organized labor and health care has gone hand in hand from the beginning in 2008 when our president decided to uh, uh, enact the Affordable Health Care Act. Uh, and so we are just, you know, just so excited about everybody's in, you know, everybody getting enrolled, everybody get uh, on board with the Affordable Care Act. It, it's something that's going to help us out in the long run. There's a lot of things we have now that we never had before, as far as health, as far as preventive health, as far as uh, being uh, able to go to a doctor when we need to go. So uh, our big thing is that we want to try to get as many people enrolled. We want to try to get as many people signed up. We want to be able to ask them any question you have. And we just, just happy that you came out tonight. Thank you. How you doing, everyone? My name is Carlos Noble. I work for Tri-County Rural Health Network. And I'm an IPA guy, the in-person assister. And what we do is we, uh, we inform people. We separate the uh, myths and the facts from the truth. And we make sure that our people are duly informed about how they're being helped and how they're being serviced and how they can weigh their options so that they can be more uh, in, their, in their corner of, of, of choosing to be comfortable. Uh, when I think of the Affordable Health Care Act, I think of comfort because it took those days away from us where we really knew our doctor. How many in here knew the doctor that they brought them into the world? Okay, most of those times, after a while, those times were taken from us. With this Affordable Care Act, we get a chance to become more familiar. And when you're more comfortable, healing begins. Thank you. Thank you. I also wanted to let everybody know that we have some uh, IPs back there, personal assistants, who if anybody is uh, wanting to sign up tonight, they can do paper applications, they can do phone applications, they can even do it on the computer. So let's not leave here without everybody taking advantage of affordable health care. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this up for questions. Does, does anybody have any questions? 
no questions. Well, I, you know what? I have a question. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, my first question is this. Um, if, if somebody has a, um, if, if you work for a company or something like that, can you keep your insurance and, um, and can you keep your insurance or can you shop around for more affordable insurance? To answer that, uh, when you say affordable health care, when you, when you think of affordable health care, it just simply is translated into options. You always have a choice. When you have a business, if you have less than 50 workers, 25 to 50 workers, you can you have a choice on whether you want to get go through the marketplace to insure them or if it's cheaper for you to allow them to go and insure themselves. However, you still have a choice. Okay? Yeah, it's affordable health care, that income-driven basis, the prices of the insurance is income-driven. Well, in actuality, uh, it's income-based, not income-driven, because everybody that wants or needs affordable health care don't have an income. See, and that's the beautiful thing about it. Even if you don't have an income, you still get serviced. You know, how many would like to go to Red Lobster and be able to sit down and still get something to eat whether they had money or not? <laughs> oh, 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 really? You, you like lobster? You like steak? Okay, so now if I'm sitting at the table and the, the maitre d' comes in and he tells you, uh, well, come on in and sit down, and you say, sir, I don't have any money. But he says, come on in and sit down anyway, and you can have just what this guy is eating. Would you go and sit down and eat? That's what the affordable health care is. It's probably the, the dumbest question, but I want there, there is no dumb question. I want to ask, I want to ask, what is health care? What is health care, and is it just something, the same thing that Obama is, is talking about? What is health care? Wow. Simple but powerful. Uh, health care is actually comfort. See, America, we're having babies every day, but America is getting no younger. When you speak of health care, you speak of right now. You speak of being able to get to where you need to get to in order to cope with right now. Well, health care is making sure that you're comfortable with you and yourself and that which is inside of you. Okay, because we all have psychological things that we think of, and we all have natural things that we think of. But health care is something that keeps all of us fluent and keeps us going. Okay? I'm going to say it from my point of view as a caseworker. Health care is allowing you to go to the doctor without... Um, having money, if you're eligible, and have your checkup, and have your health care needs. If you have high blood pressure, if you have conditions that you don't know you have, you now have the opportunity to go to the doctor and not worry about how you're going to pay for it. Because you will have insurance, just like someone working has insurance. And you can choose your insurance company, and we can prevent a lot of the health care problems that we have if we go to the doctor before we get them, have our checkup, and our needs are taken care of, rather than going to the emergency room every time you have some health issue and charging a big bill that you can't pay. With this affordable care, if you are working and you don't make much money, like minimum wage, it's a possibility you can get your health care free. You won't have to pay anything. If you're not working and you don't have health care, you will be able to get health care. And in health care, we mean your checkup, your physical, your medication. If you have dental issues, mental health issues, all of this will be taken care of. Every day on my job, I see people ages 19 to 64 who are not able to pay for their medical. 
They have health issues, but they can't get it. I have to say, I'm sorry, ma'am. I have to deny your application. Thank God I don't have to do that anymore come January. And I'm trying to tell everyone, this is a great thing. I've been praying for it a long time, and I'm so thankful that it's here because a lot of times people die trying to get medication, trying to get what they need. This is health care. Thank you. Your name? Marsha Frazier. I want to uh, ask this question to you, Ms. Bellington. Um, there are some patients that have, people who have regular Medicare, and you know there's a gap that doesn't close that Medicare doesn't cover. So come January, will they be able to have some kind of uh, insurance available for that? Some kind of, some Medicare, some kind of supplemental insurance or something? Medicare, yeah. Um, I'm not familiar with Medicare. That comes through the Social Security. But um, if you have Medicare and you have a certain income, the Department of Human Services will pay your copay and all of those through the Medicare Savings Program. And if your income is below a certain amount, you're eligible for our Medicaid card that will cover the gap. But if it's over, um, I'm not sure. This covers to me that I've been told with my little knowledge on it, um, the gap between the people who can't get Medicaid and the people who can't get Medicare. I, I just want to take a step back to, to, to the question, the original question about affordable. And, 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 and we face this every day. I'm a navigator and I supervise seven navigators in Little Rock. And the number one problem we have a lot of times is when people hear that word affordable, affordable. Uh, they, you know, they want, they want to change their insurance because they feel it's not affordable to them. And the one thing you have to understand, if you have a job, and your job, your employer is providing you insurance, if your insurance meets the guidelines of 10 essential benefits, and it's less than 8% of your annual income, it's affordable insurance. You might not like it, but it's affordable insurance. You cannot leave your employer's insurance and go into the marketplace and get insurance. The marketplace is going to kick you out. So when you start looking at what's affordable, you have to look at your insurance company, if your, uh, your employer. If your insurance is less than 8% annual of your income, it provides the essential benefits by the guidelines required by the uh, uh, Human Service, uh, Department of Human Health and Human Services, then it's affordable. I'll give you a perfect example. I have special needs children, you know, which means that uh, me and my wife have a high income. It's not affordable to me, but it meets the requirements of the, of the federal guidelines. I cannot leave my insurance to try to find another insurance that I think is cheaper because it, I, they won't let me. They will kick me out every time. So I want the, uh, people to understand that because we get every day we get people who come in, we go through the process of trying to get them enrolled and find out that you, you know, it says that you have insurance to your job because believe me, the hub, the, the our database that they use will find out who you are. If you have insurance, it's going to kick you back out. It's going to show you that, oh, you already have insurance, it's affordable, you cannot get into the marketplace. And that's one thing that a lot of people aren't understanding. So when you hear that word affordable, you have to know that if you have insurance that's deemed affordable by the government, you cannot go anywhere else. I also want people to, to know as well that college students, people, a, a lot of folks who are working at Walmart, Brookshire's and stuff, you can almost bet that they either don't have a short insurance or that they don't have enough to, to get what's needed. So I want to make sure that everybody takes advantage of that because we have a lot of places that do not offer insurance and we have people who do not have jobs. 
So this is what this is, thing is for, is to make sure that people who need it are getting the insurance. Ms. Tiffany. Uh, yes, I have two questions. December, it was just moved up, okay? Uh, for the second question, not if you have insurance already. Like he said, if you have a comparable insurance that's doing good for you, you like that insurance, it's taking care of you, you don't have to switch over. You have a choice, okay? But the thing is, and I'm more uh, Tri-County, where y'all at? They'll tell you I'm more of the radical uh, one of us in the bunch because of the fact that I look at this thing from a tactical way. Because you have a lot of insurance companies now that are independent that are saying, okay, I'm going to match what the affordable health care is doing. I'm going to stand where they stand. But then that doesn't, t they don't tell you that once this thing is all over that they can vacillate with their prices. They can go up or down. Well, the good thing about that is with the Affordable Health Care Act, once you go through the marketplace, there is no vacillation. It stays exactly the way, the, at the same level where you came in. Okay? So just be aware that when you sign up and these other companies, these other independent companies tell you, well, okay, we're just as low. As I heard uh, uh, my brother, man, the, the navigator said, that they are out there. And, it, it, and if you don't sign up, they'll, you know, they're, they're bullying most of the people into signing up. You sign up with me or you're not going to have insurance for a certain while. Well, everything that, that is worth getting takes a little chance. Okay? So, you know, if you don't sign up for the Affordable Health Care Act and the insurance you have is doing whatever it's doing for you, that's good. You can keep that. But if you decide that you want to change, just make sure that you do it in ample time to where you can go through the marketplace and be on time as far as getting insured. Okay? My name is Yvonne Murphy Siles. I am from the Jefferson County Health Unit. I am a in person, a sister guide for the health unit. I'm here with my partner, Ms. Jennifer Cofield, this afternoon. I wanted to expound on what the gentleman had indicated on persons who have employer-based insurance. Um, what I wanted to indicate in addition to his statement was that the Affordable Care Act was designed with the goal of not only getting all citizens covered, but for employers to begin to offer insurance to their employees that are, is affordable. So that is one of the reasons why if you have employer-based insurance and it is affordable, you are not given the opportunity to shop on the marketplace. Additionally, the deadlines are two. Where it seemed to get people signed up by December 23rd, which will allow them to have coverage effective as of January 1. But you actually have until March 31st of 2014 to complete the process. But if you are a Medicaid person who may have a changeover, or you're an individual who just wants to make sure everything's in place, we encourage you to visit with us before December 23rd. That way your premium can be depleted so that you have coverage as of January 1. As it relates to penalties, yes there are. There will be a penalty this first year in the amount of $95. The following year it will increase. So again, $95 may be pocket change to some, but to some others, that's a bill. So this is something that's available to you, affordable to you, and we'd like to make sure that you do get signed up. What, what women's issues are not covered? Two, is there an age limit to sign up for the Affordable Health Care Act? Three. Let me answer. What? Well, I, I don't want to forget because they're not all my questions. Three, if, uh, can a non-custodial parent or guardian register a child? Well, let's do those three.
first of all, on the women's issues, uh, the one thing that the Affordable Care Act has put in place what we call 10 essential benefits. Part of those 10 uh, essential benefits are mammograms, uh, you, can, you can get, I think, if it, colonoscopy and pap smears, and pap smears are, free. are free. So your, your insurance company, you are able to go and get those things. The one thing that affordable health care is trying to do is become a, a preventive, uh, preventive medicine. What a lot of people don't understand, the United States leads the world in the amount of money spent on health care. The United States is the 15th healthiest country in, your, in the world. Cuba, which is considered a third world country to us, is like number two in health care. So there's a country wh who spends less money than we do that is healthier than us. And part of that is because there's no preventive, me there's no preventive medication. There's no preventive incentive here. M most of the people, when they get sick, they don't go to the doctor because they can't afford it. So they go to the emergency room, which drives up the price of health care. So these essential benefits is put in. So yes, there are women's issues, just like men's issues. You know, that we, you know, I'm glad I'm over 50, so I can go get me a colonoscopy and it doesn't come out of my pocket now where I used to have to pay for it. The second question, or I think the third question, and we had this in our office, there was a young man who was paying child support. Part of his child support was that he had to provide insurance for the child, but he was not claiming the child on his insurance. There are rules, there are exceptions to where court order, he's court ordered to have uh, health care for that child. He can't, he can't go into the marketplace and get uh, coverage for that child. What I always tell people, you have to check with whoever, if he's paying child support or whatever arrangement you have made with that non-custodial parent, you have to check with them and see. If you have insurance on a child and you want that father that's not in the household to, or to, to get that insurance, then you have to talk to him about that or talk to her about that to work that out. But there are cases where that can happen. And what was your second question? Age limits. The age limit is, if you have a child over 18, I think that 19, 19 through 64, you know, uh, anything under 19, I think they can go to our kids or what they call the CHIPS program. You can also keep your child on your, on your insurance up until the age of 26. Does that answer your question? Okay, if you want to elaborate. I just wanted to tell on what he said about, um, he was speaking, what, did, what she asked about? Custodial. Yeah, the custodial, the custodial. Now, unless that person who has those children has went through the courts and has documents that say that they're the guardian, they cannot. But if they have went through the courts and they have papers that, that say that they're the guardian and they're in, char they're in charge of that child, they can. A lot of the children will be eligible for our kids. And that's either our kids A or our kids B. And the way it is set up now, some parents may not be eligible for any category that we have at the Department of Human Services but their children can still get Medicaid through the Department of Human Services with our kids A or B. One of the things you have to do though when you come up there is you have to prove relationship and that you have custody. But a lot of people will be signing up for the affordable health care for themselves as adults and their children will be eligible for Medicaid through our kids because they have increased the income limit for those. And I have them back, the income limit back in the back on the table. If you're receiving our kids A or our kids B now, if your child is now eligible for our kids A and you already have B, they're going to be automatically changed over in January. And you'll get a notice in the mail telling you that you no longer have to pay a copay because instead of B, you're going to be eligible for A. You have a population of people out there that's uh, 
get food stamps. They are from DHS. You sent out some letters. Those people out there, you said if you was getting food stamps, you was already eligible. Now, did you explain to them, is there a criteria? It doesn't matter if they get $10, they still already signed up for that insurance? The letters were sent out to all of the recipients who received food stamps or SNAP who might have qualified for the program. All they had to do was sign the letter and send the letter back to us. And then we processed their um, application under the Affordable Care Act for them. Um, if they were eligible for a category of Medicaid that was already open, they were signed up for that. But if they did not send the letter back, there's a possibility that we took for granted they didn't want the service. And we could not make them sign up for it. We sent it out. They have to send it back. And the word is getting around now. The first few weeks, we didn't have people sending them back. But now that the word is getting around, we're getting more and more every day. But they had to sign the form saying, that they did want us to make the application for them. And they can come into our office if they didn't get a letter or if they think their letter is lost, they can still come to the office. You can give them a letter to sign. Station A. <laughs> Eric Fawcett. Oh, it's loud. Um, let's say, because uh, you said, you mentioned something about college students earlier. Uh, let's say that a, a college student is no longer claimed under his parents' insurance or her parents' insurance, uh, how would the affordable health care be beneficial to them? If the college student is 18 years old, that college student can come in and apply for our kids for themselves, and they can get our kids until they turn 19. Then uh, in, in, in a situation like that, all you would have to do is just go into the marketplace, you put your information in, uh, more than likely, and, and, and it's going to be different, Arkansas, uh, you might hear people say this, Arkansas is the model state, Arkansas is the state that the rest of the country is watching, because Arkansas has the hybrid uh, uh, exchange, it has a state and it has a federal based exchange. Everything, you know, to, to be honest with you, what's going to happen in the next couple of years, whatever goes on in Arkansas is going to trickle down to the rest of the states. And, and the way Arkansas is doing it is, you say you're 22, your parents don't, hold your, don't have you on their insurance, you go into the marketplace, you put your information in. As a college student, you're not making that much money. You, you don't have a lot of income. You're going to automatically get kicked over to the expanded Medicaid for the state of Arkansas, which in turn will cost you little or nothing out of pocket because of your income. And that's, and, and, and that's what's so good about the Arkansas model for this affordable health care. Because they expanded, they expanded Medicaid, Medicare, it opened the door for any adult that meets the criteria and the qualifications to get the, to get the health care they need. So if you're in college, your parents say, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna kick you off our insurance, you know, you're on your own, you're grown, you just go down to the market, just go into the marketplace, get enrolled, put your information in, and it's gonna kick you over to the uh, state-based insurance. You know, when you, you know, when you have your end, it, well, let me, let me take a step back. Once you get into the marketplace and you get this insurance and you're paying your premium, you pick your plan, you know, with, with the company you're with and you're paying your premium, once things change, if your income change, you have to report that. Uh, what they call life-changing events. You have a child, you, you know, you, you switch jobs where you get more money, you know, you would, 
as a college student, you wouldn't hope that you're going to stay broke the rest of your life. So it's going to come a point where you're going to start making more money. And as you start making more money, you have to report these changes. And, you know, I graduated college. Now I work for IBM. I'm making $150,000 a year. I need to change, you know, my income, my, uh, my income level. Now my insurance is going to change. My premium is going to change. Everything is going to change. Are you a college student now? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, well, we can sign you up right back there. Trinita, raise your hand up. All right, that young lady in the blue, she'll take care of you, okay? Uh, yeah, uh, well, I'm, I'm insured through the Army, the military service, uh, study. I'll just leave it alone. I just got track here, but uh, I, have a, I have another question. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, a student is still under his parents' insurance. He's still claimed by his parents' insurance, but he no longer wants to be claimed under their insurance. He wants to go on and do his own thing, and he wants to sign up for the affordable health care. And y'all mentioned something earlier when they, you said that uh, if he was under somebody's uh, insurance, he would probably be denied. Now, would he be denied the benefits of the affordable health care because he's already claimed under his parents' insurance, or would he be accompanied by the benefits. Did, did everybody get the question? He, he, what he said is if a, a college student or a young adult, uh, if their parents is carrying them uh, on their insurance, but the college student or a young adult doesn't want to be on it and he wants to go into the market to get his own or her own insurance, Will the market kick them out, or will the market allow them to have, use affordable health care? That's one of those questions. I think we all looked at it and said, why would you? You get free health care from your parents. Why would you want to? Uh, in, a, in a situation like that, and remember, uh, uh, a lot of this is based on your previous year's tax filing. So if his parents filed him you know, and covered him in insurance, if he gets off, if he, you know, first of all, his parents would have to release him. You know, even though he wants to not to be covered, it's his parents that would have to quit covering him. As long as his parents is covering him and he goes into the marketplace and they run his social security number and all this information, the marketplace is going to kick him out because they're going to say, you already have, you are already covered under insurance. You can't go in and you don't need insurance because you have affordable insurance. So what you would have to do, you would have to go to your parents and say, Mom and Dad, I don't want you to do anything free for me anymore. You know, I'm a grown man. I'm ready to get out of my home. And I want to pay my own insurance. And Mom and Dad said, okay, go for it. That means you got to get a job. That means there's a lot of things you got to do to pay for this insurance. But even in that case, if that was a... Uh, uh, the worst case scenario, and they did kick you out their insurance, all you would do is, like he said, go and enroll in the marketplace because you're a college student. And we all know that that's the brokest time of your life is when you're in college. It would, it would, in the state of Arkansas, it's going to kick you over. Now, one thing I want to stress, if you go to a, uh, and, and my organization, we, we navigate, we are navigators for Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. Louisiana and Texas do not have the expanded state-based Medicare. So what happens in Arkansas, if you went to Tennessee, if you went to Texas, or you went to Louisiana, what you get in Arkansas, you will not get in those states. So if you're a college student in Texas, and you're not on your parents' insurance, and you go and roll into the marketplace, they're not going to kick you over to a state base. You'll be too old. If you say you're over the age of 19, you're too old for chips, which is the, the our kids. So now you have to go in, and because there's no expanded Medicare, you have to pay that premium and hope that you get some type of tax credits to actually pay your, your monthly premium. So that's why I say that Arkansas is a model state because if, if it works in Arkansas, you're going to find out more states doing it because it's really that's the best way to do it, the way they have done it in Arkansas. It covers everybody. It's a, it makes sure that everybody is covered. With this insurance, 
does it have an open season or it reevaluates you every year with your income? Every year? Yeah, it's income tax time. It go up? No, 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 no it doesn't go up. You get, you get evaluated. Now, evaluation doesn't mean fluctuation. It just simply means that they're going to take a look at what you've done that past year to see if your monies has changed in any form or fashion. If they have, then they'll adjust it according to your income. Well, that is, that's still saying it can be raised. That's still saying it can be raised above. Now, with insurance, uh, most of us know that your insurance will be going up every year. Your insurance all offer open season. If you don't do anything, that's fine. But they don't go back and reevaluate you every year with your income. <laughs> Two things that's going to that's going to affect how this insurance is going to play out. The number one thing they want to do with affordable insurance is to force insurance companies into competition. That's what you want, because when there's competition, competition drives the price down. So the more people we get enrolled, that's why we do these forms. That's why we are here tonight. We want to get as many people enrolled in this as possible, because now insurance companies, the price of the insurance is going to be driven down. The one thing that would not happen, even if your insurance did raise up a little, it can't go beyond 8.5% of your annual income. It has to stay below that. If not, it becomes unaffordable. So that's one thing, that's the cap right there. 8.5% of your annual income. Insurance companies know that there's that cap. So they got to keep prices below that. So the more people, and what's going to happen, and that's, like I said, that's why we are here. If we don't get enough people enrolled, then insurance is going to go up. Because there's no, comp there's, there's no competition. There's no people. So, so the more people get involved, the more insurance companies are going to fight. Because believe me, this one thing is going to happen. Insurance companies still going to make money. It's not we're going to drive them out of business. They're still going to make money. But what you want to do is just like anything else. How many of you, how many of you will drive across town to get gas at five cents cheaper? I know I will. I drive from West Little Rock to Southwest and fill my tank up because gas is five cents cheaper. And that's what you want. You want it to be where you know what? When I pick my insurance plan, I'm picking it because it gives me what I want and it's cheap, and I still get all the benefits. And to answer the young lady's question who was just standing up here, uh, the amount and the percentage are two separate things. And a lot of times people look at the amount and the percentage and try to make it the same. It's not. If you make more money, like the young man said, 8.5%, right? 8.5% of $1,000 is different from 8.5% of $5,000. But it's still 8.5%. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So we might think that it's changing, but it's still affordable. And that's the whole thing. You know, the young man asked me the question of what is healthcare? Well, healthcare is a smile in your grandchild's eyes. Healthcare is, 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 is the football game that, that, that you see your nephew play. Healthcare is, is, is the prom that your daughter goes to when she goes to get graduated. Healthcare is your grandmother being able to teach you remedies of, of wellness that you never knew about. Healthcare is the connection of all the things that help us to see the things that we would normally get a chance to see if we didn't treat ourselves right. There's a lot of different things in the world that are opposing or in, in opposition against us. You got drinking, you got smoking, you got a lot of different things. And all of those things stunt or put a breach into togetherness of our generations. Well, you ask me what healthcare is. 
health care is saying, I want to see you tomorrow. How many of us know somebody without health care? See, I, I, I'm telling you, that's, that's exactly the reason why we're here. Eight years ago, the major topic for the United States was health care. You could actually be on your job, those who have jobs, and every year you're, you get, may get a raise, but your health care goes up. Who, who's experienced that? I, I know. I, so that's right. And, and to us, it's not right. And that's one of the reasons why our president made sure that we would be able to and not just us as minorities, but everybody would be able to afford health care. There's no reason for a child or an adult, whether they have a job or not, to not be covered. There's no reason for someone with a pre-existing condition not to be, uh, not to have health care. There's no reason for that. And as the gentleman said, if we take care of ourselves better, if we help other people take care of ourselves better, we'll see a better world, and our children will live longer, and we'll be in our children's life longer. I'm Carlos Noble, and we just had an awesome night tonight dealing with uh, the health care issues of, of what we've been trying to find out about what the, the odds and the ends are about the Affordable Health Care Act. But I just want to let you know that health care is much more than just a, a plan, a bill, or a vote. Uh, Health care is something that America has lost, but we're now regaining because now we get a chance to get those days back where we had the doctor that we knew from a child on up, where we can see that doctor in a grocery store or see that doctor in, in, in a clothing store or around our neighborhoods where we knew and the comfortability set in where, where truly where healing begins. We can no longer be healed if we're not comfortable in the place that we go in. Most of the times that we send our young daughters or our young children to doctors, they come out with medicine, but yet and still they're uneased on the inside. We need to be comfortable again. America needs to be comfortable again. And with the Affordable Health Care Act, we surely can work towards that endeavor. Have a beautiful night. This is Alderman Stephen Mays. Hey, I really enjoyed the Affordable Health Care Act form tonight at Coleman School, put on by Ephraim Elliott and the Westside Loop Neighborhood Watch Association. It really taught me a lot by being here. I wish the rest of Palm Lift could have came out and listened and asked questions about the Affordable Health Care Act. And if you, you, when you watch the video, you have any questions, contact the people that was on the panel up there. They really opened my mind to a lot of things that I was thinking and a lot of questions that I want to ask. I'm glad I came. Palm Bluff, we love you. If you need anything, or Alderman Stephen Mays, give me a call. I love you. Merry Christmas. And continue to help work together to continue to make Palm Bluff a great city like it is. God bless you. Alderman Stephen Mays, take care. Pine Bluff Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority is proud to partner with this group to host the Affordable Care Act Forum. And we're, this is a part of our social action focus, and we're very happy to be here, and we hope that many people will sign up for the Affordable Care Act. Hi, I'm Ephraim Elliott. We're at the Affordable Health Care Forum. I have with me Tiffany Copeland. Tiffany, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am the site coordinator for the Palm Bluff School District 21st Century After School Program. Okay, now tell me what you think about the affordable health care and what you got going on. Well, I think the affordable health care is uh, its a great way for everyone to be insured. I'm very excited about it because with this being um, in place, no one will be left behind for being taken care of with any type of health issue. Not only that, I'm trying to make Pine Bluff aware of what's going on. Next Thursday, I invite everyone out to Bel Air School at 6 o'clock where we will also have a forum. Okay, that's December 19, 6 o'clock, the affordable health care, the second part of it. And I want to thank you again for helping with this, Ms. Copeland. Thank you.
I have with me today Eric, and he's one of our UAPB college students. What did you think about the affordable health care form? I think it's really great. I think a lot of college students who do not have uh, health care or who got kicked off from their parents' health care should go and apply for it. So you, what you're saying is there should be no reason why a college student should not have affordable health care. Right. You shouldn't, there's no reason. You should go out and get it right now. If you can't right now, get it right now. <laughs> I want to thank you uh, for coming out and supporting us. Uh, Eric is also a member of what? Vikings by Fidelity Society Incorporated, founded in 1965 at Gremlin State University. And he's also a? Mason also. You know, traveling light, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the best of both worlds and a young man who's out here taking a, a advantage of the affordable health care. I have another member of our uh, affordable health care panel. Can you introduce yourself for me? Hi, my name is Krista Battles. I work for Options for Life Services based out of Texarkana, Texas. I service Jefferson County and Bradley County. So that means that if somebody needs affordable health care, they can get in contact with you? Yes, sir. They can always. Um, my number is 870-879-9180 or 870-692-6874. Now, what company do you work for? Options for Life Services based out of Texarkana, Texas. So that means that if somebody is actually in need of affordable health care, you also uh, are at the hospital at some time, aren't you? Yes, I'm at the hospital every other Saturday from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Well, I want to thank you for coming out and being a member of our panel. I think it was a great experience. You let us know how much uh, we are, the information that we need, and I think you're a great resource. Thank you. I thank you for giving me the opportunity and the chance to be here. All right. Hi, this is Everett Elliott. We're at the Affordable Health Care Forum, and I, I'm with uh, some of my co-sponsors. I want everybody to introduce yourself. I'm Lucia Crawford Jasper. Jones Ada Lassiter. Kelly Bryant. And Sharon Nicholson. I want everybody to know uh, Delta Sigma Theta is most definitely a community oriented organization. They uh, reached out and wanted to help with the affordable health care because they understood that if everybody is healthy, we have a healthy country and a healthy state. I want to thank everybody for coming out and thank you guys for being co stars Also, we have Alderman Mays who just stepped in. It's just great to be here with uh, Representative Ephraim Elliott and these late, lovely ladies of Delta Sigma Theta. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> once again, I'm Alderman Steve Mays. Enjoyed the uh, affordable health care forum. And once again, thank you, lady from Delta Sigma Theta. You're awesome. It's a pleasure. <laughs> once again, Delta Sigma Theta co-sponsored affordable health care. Thank you, ladies, again. And we have another young lady who's here at the Affordable Health Care, and she has done some great things. I want to introduce her. What is your name, baby? My name's Kaylee Howard. Kaylin, okay. Now tell me about this beautiful scarf that you have. I made these for the Salvation Army Angel Tree. She made it for the Salvation Army Angel Tree. Now tell me, how did you make these things? Well, I buy fabric, and you usually just cut them up. And then you cut the ends and tie those in knots, and then you have a scarf. Outstanding. And she came out to the affordable health care to showcase these things to, to let people know. And there's something else that you're, you're going to do with these scarves after you make them. Well, I was planning on selling them. Okay. She was planning on selling them as well as she's going to also give some of them to people in need. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what school do you go to? I go to Lighthouse Academies. She goes to Lighthouse Academy. It is outstanding when a young lady has this kind of talent and wants to give it to the community and help. And she's also an inspiring entrepreneur as well. Now, tell me, what's your name again? My name's Kaylee Howard. And what grade are you in? Six. Sixth grade, Lighthouse Academy. I want to thank you for coming to the Affordable Health Care. And I want to let everybody know this is one of our future entrepreneurs and she's going to afford, she's going to have her employees have affordable health care. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Great. 
I just want to uh, reiterate one of the biggest concerns of most people is this deadline uh, to, uh, you know, to, to file to get enrolled. Well, the deadline is December 23rd. That's to have you have health coverage by January 1st, 2014. Now, uh, the, the, uh, that deadline was extended, I think, from December 15th, so they added an extra week. But just because you do not reach that December 23rd deadline does not mean you still can't enroll in health care. You have up until March 31st of 2014 to be enrolled for 2014. And so, uh, and, and another thing that people don't know is that you can enroll throughout the year, you know, and once you enroll, if you enroll one month, you say you enroll in the month of uh, August, but, and you pay your uh, insurance premium in the month of August, come the month of September, you will be eligible, you'll be covered under insurance by the plan that you chose. So you can, you know, I know everybody's been hearing this December 31st deadline, and I think that, you know, they have the idea that if I don't enroll by December 31st, then, you know, or December 23rd, then I don't need to enroll. Yes, you do, because enrollment goes on for the whole year, and I think the cutoff for uh, being covered uh, in, in January 2014 is uh, March 31st. Hi, I have with me today uh, Reverend Orr. He was a part of the Affordable Health Care Forum. Reverend Orr, tell me what you think about the Affordable Health Care. Well, I think it's something that, that that's going to help all Americans in the long run. Uh, the one thing uh, that we spoke of during the health care forum is that the United States spends uh, an enormous amount of money on health care, but we are the least healthiest people in the world. Mm. And I think uh, by making this a, a Affordable Care Act, what our president and what our legislature are looking at, if we could become more uh, health conscious mm -hmm. have more preventive uh, uh, measures, then that'll drive the price of health care down. So I think it's going to be something that in the long run, I know it looks crazy right now, it looks it looks confusing right now, but in the long run, it's going to be something that's going to benefit uh, uh, all American people. Now, e even in when we talk about health care and affordable health care and all that, it's to at a point where anybody, whether you have a job or you don't have a job, you still can't afford or you may be able to still get insurance. So the college student, the people who uh, may not have a job, they can still be uh, covered. Is that correct? Yes. And, 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 and you know, and, and, and you have to look at it from so many different angles. We were knocking on doors for health care, trying to get this, uh, 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 this, uh, uh, this health care initiative passed. The one thing we would always say, it's set in place in this country that uh, if you are disadvantaged, you know, you have uh, special services for health care. Our kids first, you know, Medicaid, Medicare. Uh, if you're rich, you just have the money to pay for right. health care. Mm -hmm. But you had so many people who are out, hardworking people, mm -hmm. you know, who worked every day, but they could not afford this health care because it skyrocketed, mm -hmm. you know, and it just kept on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And now you have a situation where if you are that hardworking individual, that now you can have an insurance that's affordable to your income. Mm -hmm. You know, you had some people paying 15, 20 percent of that income. Mm -hmm. uh, to health care, that one out of every three bankruptcies That's was right. health care related. Health care related. And now you have this situation where all that is being reined in, mm -hmm. you know, where, uh, the, uh, where I always tell people that, uh, that uh, in our Constitution, say so you have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't get life and liberty, you can't be uh, happy if you're sick. It's you know, so right. now you have that that situation where you can go out and you know and and, and and do the things that you need to do and be healthy while doing it. Well, I want to thank you for coming out, being on our panel. I want to let you know thank you. Thank it was you. a it's a pleasure. Uh, he brought some IP people out, and we've been registering people and getting everybody situated. I want to thank you again for coming out and letting you know you've been placed on alert. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs>